things in our life, amen, is that people, things, statements will begin to stick on our life. All of these different things that people say over us, amen, and we begin to believe these things, and we don't realize that once we're saved and brought under the blood and brought up, all of these things have been taken away from us, hallelujah. Now we are a new creature, amen. And because we are a new creature, we can stand in a new authority and power in Christ, hallelujah. But sometimes it's difficult for people to understand, amen, that they are not the same when they walked in as when they walked out, hallelujah. It's the truth, amen. Let's take a look at Mark, amen. Amen. We're going to take a look starting at verse 17, hallelujah. Mark 9, verse 17, amen. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who's possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech, amen. They brought a Jesus, a demon-possessed boy. Amen. Let's take a look at the next one. We're going to continue on to 26. Hallelujah. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams in the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive him, the spirit, out, but they could not. Amen. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Amen. Amen. The disciples tried, but they couldn't. Amen. Why? Because they didn't believe. Hallelujah. Because they weren't able to understand. Amen. Jesus is saying and rebuking them. He says, unbelieving generation, how long am I going to have to stay with you? Amen. He's rebuking the disciples. He wasn't rebuking the man. Amen. That comes later. Hallelujah. He was rebuking the disciples. Says, How long do I have to stay with you? How long? Why are you an unbelieving generation? Amen. And I have to look at my own life, hallelujah, and say, sometimes I am unbelieving in my generation, amen. And how long does God have to wait on the sidelines before I put him in the fight? It's the truth. Sometimes, amen. We wait to the bitter end before we bring Jesus in, hallelujah, till we have nothing left, amen. It's the truth, hallelujah. I've been in situations in my life where the Lord has told me to do something, amen, and I procrastinated, and I procrastinated, and I procrastinated till I was completely expelled, hallelujah, which I should have left a year before, amen. It's time that when God tells us something, we begin to believe it, and we begin to move in it. Amen. Verse 20. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground, rolling around, foaming at the mouth. Amen. One thing about this verse I've always liked is whenever a demon comes into the presence of the Lord, amen, it immediately tries to intimidate. Hallelujah. Who wants to pray for somebody who's rolling around on the ground, foaming at the mouth? Amen. That's what happens. Hallelujah. But Jesus wasn't intimidated. We get intimidated. Oh, what am I going to do? Hallelujah. What are we going to do? You, when I go to Benin in particular, amen, there's a lot of voodoo and juju there. Hallelujah. During the worship, people will start to manifest all over the place. Amen. Some people get scared and leave. Hallelujah. They get intimidated by the enemy. Amen. But we, like Jesus, need to be calm and understand that we are stronger than what's inside that person. Amen. 
Verse 21 says, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he said. Very calmly, Jesus says, how long has he been like this? The rest of us were like, oh no, what's going on, amen? That's how the enemy wins sometimes. He intimidates us. He gets us concerned about everything and what's happening and looking at the natural, amen, and not seeing the internal part, amen, that's changing it. Hallelujah. How many times has the in Satan intimidated to us, believing that everything is going to fall apart? Everything is changing, amen. We've done something wrong, hallelujah. And God has left us, amen. How many times has the enemy tried to intimidate us with something like the electricity getting turned off, amen? amen. Yep. Hey, I've had my electricity turned off a dozen times, amen. amen. God is still on the throne, amen. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going to make a change in this generation. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether or not my electricity is on or my electricity is off. Hallelujah. Whether I have $1 in my pocket or whether I have $100 in my pocket, God is still on the throne. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you to believe that everything is falling apart in your life. It's so important that we understand this. Amen. Because it has nothing to do with the natural. Jesus was not intimidated, amen. He said, how long has the boy been like this, amen? I can almost hear him quietly say, how long has the boy been like this, amen? We were in a meeting in Plattsburgh, New York, and somebody started manifesting. And I remember Iris Stanley so clearly said, I believe that person is manifesting, amen. <laughs> That's not just like else, you. Everybody else is going crazy. He says, I believe this person's manifesting. We need to pray for her right now. Amen. Don't allow Satan to intimidate you and change you and not realize the power that's in you. Jesus knew he had the power to throw the demon out. Amen. So he wasn't intimidated. He realized the power he had. Amen. Verse 22. It is often thrown him into the fire and the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, if, take pity on us. If you can do something. And help us, amen. <laughs> yeah. You know it's a spirit if it tries to take you out, amen. Yeah. You know if it's a spirit if it tries to kill you, hallelujah. Because the enemy will do anything to take you out, amen. That's when you know it's a spiritual battle, hallelujah. That's when you have to stand, amen. But the interesting thing says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Sometimes we come to God and say, God, if you can do anything for us and take pity on me and help me, hallelujah. And God is saying, if you can, verse 23. Yeah. Right. Pastor, if you... You can just pray for me. Maybe I'll get healed. If you can. If you can, what does Jesus say to that? Everything is possible for him who believes. So I say, if you can, Jesus says, everything is possible. Amen. Amen. 